What's up everybody, my name is JD Sanchez and I'm gonna be talking about my Olympic trip to Rome. I went to Rome not too long ago <laughs> and this whole situation is pretty crazy. It's all for the Olympics, it's Olympic qualifiers. And it started, I think all the way back in 2022, at the end of 2022, you'd have to do a video contest. And funny thing is, I entered the last day, the day that it was due. I wasn't gonna do it. And then you would have to do a contest at SoCal. And then if you did that and you got high enough, then you could go to all the other ones. So the most recent one, I went to Rome, which is super sick because I love pasta. And <laughs> I was more excited for the pasta than anything. And it was so good. The pizza was insane. Fukasha, I think it's called. The best bread I've ever had. It's literally so good. I don't know what it is. It tastes cheesy, but it doesn't. So I got the email to come to Rome to skate for USA. I'm Team USA right now. Uh, men's park. We got on a flight, we booked our tickets as fast as we could. We had a six hour layover in Calgary, so we were just, I was Pokemon going on and all that. I caught a shiny stun fisk out there, if you know, you know. Actually, we landed in Ostia. Well, that's where we are staying, so it wasn't like super hectic, but the transport, bruh! So we landed in Ostia. It's kind of a beach town, I would say. It's right next to the ocean, really nice. That's where the contest was happening. And Rome is not very clean, I will say that. I'm surprised, but once we got there, I was just relieved. Took a nap, next day, woke up, and we went all the way to the city center, Rome. Checked out everything, we went to the Colosseum, went to Vatican City, we went to the fountain, Trevi Fountain. We walked, I think around eight miles that day. So my legs are toast. Next morning, wake up, and I'm pretty sure it's practice day. This time there was 15 skaters and you would only have 45 minutes of practice with all 15 skaters. So I'd never been to that park. A bunch of people have been there before and it was my first time skating it. So I was having big trouble. I didn't know what I was gonna do. So I tried a few different runs and hoped that I could figure something out with only three days of practice. I figured a line out, but I didn't land it. I didn't land my run in the first practice, so the next day I would have to hope that I could land my run completely and just have it down for the contest. 15 skaters got 45 minutes to skate. They let you go when it's your turn. That was difficult. Nobody really likes that. I kind of like it though, because nobody snakes you and you don't almost get hurt. I got my run, didn't land it that day. Went home, went to sleep, got a really good sleep, which I was stoked on. Went there the next day, whipping the lime, skirting that thing all over. And this was the day I was praying so hard to get my run. 45 minutes of practice, 15 skaters, but this time it's not in order, it's free for all. So everyone would snake each other, which is basically go in at the same time or even sometimes somebody would be in the middle of their run and somebody drops in on you and skates with you. And I was against some of the best skaters in the world and people who do this all the time. So they know how to snake and just go in. So I was kind of scared of that. I wasn't really trying to get hurt. And everyone in my heat was like 18 and up, except for my friend George. That's what kept me kind of chill because my friend George, real good friend from the UK, he was in my heat too, and we we're both the youngest kids there, and we were having trouble getting runs in. Him and I would try to figure out a way to get into the bowl together or right after. So I was stressing that day. I didn't get my run. I was overthinking everything. I was in the shower like, bro, I need to get this before the contest or else it's not gonna go too well. It's so hard to figure out a run, especially with only three days of practice. I'll go there early, just look at the bowl, try to figure out what tricks you want to put there and what tricks will separate you from everyone else, like nobody else is doing it and some crazy gaps, they love gaps. I had a bunch of ideas, a lot of them didn't work. It was stressful. It wasn't too hard of a line, I feel like. I was just too stressed out about worrying about other people hitting me, so I just didn't 
really land my line that fast. When I decide for a run, usually I like to choose what I know I got down pretty much, like I pretty much never fall and only have like two or three tricks that are iffy. I just kind of do a run that I like. If I don't like it, then I'm not gonna do it. Even though it gets me bigger points, sometimes people, if you just go high, as high as you possibly can, you don't even have to do crazy hard tricks. Sometimes they score you way better than people who do like crazy tricks. So I had the run in my head of what I wanted to do and I had two days of practice and I didn't land it once. So I was like, dude, I need to land this run. At least land it once, that's it, just land it once. I would love to land it once because that'll help me boost my confidence so when I go into the contest, I'll be like pretty confident on my run. After day two of practice, went home pretty sore. It honestly took me a while to go to sleep. I was thinking too hard about the comp. Now, this is the day I got to land every single thing. So third day, same exact format, 45 minutes of practice, 15 skaters, free for all, anyone can just go. And today I knew I had to be very aggressive and go. And this one, I landed pretty much my whole run. I think I only fell on my final trick. Fun fact, my final trick I never landed in practice. I only landed in the contest. Final trick was a body varial 540. Honestly, it was so stoked even though I didn't land the last trick. I got more aggressive and I went a few more times and got a few more runs in. I was so desperate to land my run and get it fully down that I went at the end of the session as well, I'm pretty sure. Like when there was 10 seconds left, I'm pretty sure I dropped in, practiced, even though it was after time, that's not a good thing to do. But I was so desperate, I was trying to get that run down. Went back home and I was thinking, maybe I should change this, do this. Nah, I can't do that, it's too late. Maybe if this was on day two, I could change some stuff. But I didn't change anything. Went back in the room, had a chill dinner, played Fortnite, Got a few kills, got frustrated at Fortnite because people were being too good. And then I went to bed. Next morning, woke up, I was pumped. I was like, let's go. Boom, contest starts. My boys go, they do their runs, then it's my turn to go. First run, I roll in, carve around, air over the spine, indie grab. Then I do kickflip indie, big kickflip indie, carve back around, front side air from the spine into that quarter pipe. Blunt slide. So I did a blunt slide around this corner, carved around, stale fish into the deep end. Then I did a five. Then I did a varial flip indie. Then I went back out of the deep end, back into the shallow end. Did a boneless on the bank. Final trick with, uh, I think like one second on the clock. Body varial 540. I was hoping to land it. Didn't land it. We only get two runs. Two runs only in qualifiers. Each run is 45 seconds long. Best run counts, so whichever run you landed, they'll take that score. Whichever run was better, they'll take that score. And they tell you how they judge, but I don't think they actually judge on how they say they judge. Yeah, they'd be like, oh, creativity. Somebody does something really creative that no one else does, gets a low score. So, <laughs> First run, as I said, I fell on the very last trick, which is my banger. Second run, do the same exact run as I tried. Boom, drop in, carve around, indie, kickflip indie, front side air, blunt slide, carve around again, stale fish into the deep end, five, varial flip indie, front side bonus the bank, carve around. Body varial 540, I was like, I'm landing this no matter what. Kind of spun it wrong, grabbed in a weird spot, put it on my feet and I was like, bro, if I don't land this, I'ma literally cry. I was like, I don't care. If I slam, I slam. I did it for the name of the game. Body veil five, boom, straight to the feet. Landed pretty much halfway down, three quarters of the way down. Compressed pretty badly, like leaned forward a lot, but I landed it. I was so stoked, I like almost cried. My parents were super happy. All my boys were dabbing me up. Then I waited to see my score. I was like, let's see what I get. Kind of nervous, I wasn't, I wouldn't have been too sad if I didn't make it to quarters because then I would have to figure out another run. So I was drinking my water, sipping, hanging out by my parents and saw my score. Came in, 78, I was in second place. They would only take the top 27 to go to the quarterfinals and I was in second and um, I made it to quarters. 
I was in the top 27 quarterfinals day, was the next day. When I was trying the second run, I was doing a huge 540 on this one wall, landed it, slipped out straight to my butt cheek. I feel like I could barely walk. My leg was like done. And there was only around like two more hours until the actual contest started for me. And I was like, dude, I hope it doesn't hurt when I go. I might have to push through it and just hope I get something down. First run, I tried the run that I've been trying. Landed it first try, boom. Landed the body very five first try. I was super stoked. I didn't care if I fell on the next runs. I was just happy to get my run in. Then it was second run time. My turn to go. I tried my new line out. I switched a few things. Instead of doing that kickflip indie on that wall, I did a, the biggest five I possibly could without slamming like how I did on practice earlier in the day. My butt was hurting. It was hurting pretty bad, but I was like, I gotta push through this. I'm trying to make it to semis. Hopefully make it to semis with some of my friends and keep it going. So I pulled up, boom, big five. Did the rest of the run the same, except when I did the stale fish into the deep end, I tried to do a round the world finger flip instead of a five and I fell. Now I was like, ah, it's okay. I got one more run, I could try to do it again. Final run, this is the run where I put it all down, no matter what, if it's as sketchy as possible, I don't really care, I'm just trying to land the run. Third run, land my big five, come around, stale fish into the deep end, then I go for the out around the world finger flip, which is a pretty interesting trick. The board goes around you, you flip the board while it goes around you, try to catch it without even seeing it, and then just smack it under your feet. And I was hoping I would land it. So I went a little bit slower because the first one, it just bonked really bad. So I was figuring, hmm, maybe if I go slower, it'll actually flip. Went slower, sent it, barely grabbed it, put it on my feet. Then I had to go straight into the varial flip indie. Landed the varial flip really good. Probably one of my better ones. Did the boneless, came back around, and then did my body varial five to end it. Landed it, was super duper stoked. Ran to my parents, hugged them, uh, dapped up my boys, waited for the score, and it was kind of stressing. So in quarters, I got a 76, and I was so happy because I ended up qualifying 10th, and only top 16 go to semifinals, which is super duper sick. So I was stoked to be skating with some of the best skaters in the world. Next day, this is where it all came down to I land my run or not. I just wanted to land it, that's it. That's literally it. It was my time. I was in heat one, there was only two heats and they would only take top eight to go to finals. A bunch of people are watching, the stands are filled. Literally there's lines of people waiting outside of the park, like hundreds of people. I was like, oh, this is about to be crazy. Now, my time to go. Went in, did the same run as how I always do. I just want to be safe, want to have a safe run. Landed everything, stoked. Got a first score in, I'm pretty sure it was in, for some reason it was in the low 80s. It was a lot higher than all the other contests. I think they wanted to just look nicer on TV. So they just put higher scores. The camera was on me the whole time. I was kind of nervous, even though I'm used to being on camera all the time. It was just like, I was in front of a bunch of people live. So if I messed up and did something kind of messed up, then they can't cut that out. <laughs> it's just there on the internet. Next run, try to do my second run where I do the around the world finger flip. Went in, I tried to go f as fast and like high as I possibly could. Did a huge five, landed everything until I got to the around the world finger flip. One free around the world finger flip. Again, bonked wrong, didn't flip, fell. Now I was stressing. I was like, damn, I wanted to just land this run and I'll be chilling no matter what place I get. I'm just trying to land this. I was just sitting down watching the other skaters go, thinking to myself, you gotta land this. This is what you wanna do. This is the run that you've been wanting, so you should land it. Okay, let's get this. My turn to go. Shook off my hands, drop in, do the big air over. Didn't do as high as the 540 because this is where it counted, so I didn't want to fall on the five. Went back around, did the front side air. Did a blunt slide, a little sketchy, but I still landed it, so I was stoked. Carved back around front side. Aired from the shallow into the deep end, stale fish. Now is the time where I gotta land my trick, because once I land that trick, I'm pretty much set for the rest of the run. This was the sketchiest way I've ever landed this trick. 
flipped as slow as humanly possible, like a sloth tried to flip it. Was so slow, felt like I was in slow motion. Grabbed it barely, it was a lot further than it usually is. Put it under my feet, my feet landed all weird, it was like in all different positions. And I was like, oh shoot, do I go for the varial flip still or do I not? Come up to the next wall, I only had like less than a second of thinking of if I should do the varial flip or not, and I was like, you know what? Forget it, let's do it. Varial flip, very sketchy foot positioning. Literally do the varial flip, barely over coping. The board is literally so far away. Grabbed it by my fingertips and put it under. I was like, dude, we gotta land this. Final run, just get it done. And then you just, just be chilling for the rest of the day. Grab it, put it under my feet, land it, wobble out all sketchy. Didn't get a boneless on the bank. Then I carved around, did my final trick right on the buzzer, body barrel five. Landed really low again, but I landed it and I was stoked. Went up onto the volcano and was like, yeah, let's go. Italy was cheering for me. I was actually super stoked. Went back up to my parents, like almost cried, hugged my parents. I went over to the USA team managers and stuff. The guys who helped me get to this point, Johnny and Josh Peacock. Shout out to both of you. And also uh, Andrew, shout out to you Andrew and Whitney. Hug them, gave them a big hug, then waited for the score. I was like, let's see, hopefully I get a good score. Eh, I don't really care if I don't because I'm stoked that I landed my run. Ended up getting an 83. I was like, eh, that's okay. That's okay, that's a good enough score, but let's hope for something a little higher. I think it's because I didn't do my tricks super high, like at the end, barely landed it. I don't really know if they like that. I don't think they like the sketchiness, but some people like the sketchiness, so I was kind of surprised, but that's okay. I was like, yes, let's go. Watch my boy Jagger absolutely shred, do all of his crazy stuff. Went up to Jagger and was like, bro, you killed it. Can't wait to see you skating in finals tomorrow. And he responded, you know, when I heard your name, I never, heard of you at all. I thought you were just some random kid who somehow made it. And then I saw you go, and now I know your name, bro. You're hella sick. And I was like, yo, no way. I didn't say yo, no way. But in my head, I was like, what the heck? One of my favorite skaters just like gave me the biggest compliment. So I went back to the stands, watched the last heat, which is where all the bangers come in. Was screaming at the top of my lungs because everyone was laying their tricks. I was like, yo, yeah! yeah! I was so stoked, I was so hyped. I didn't even have a Red Bull, but I was hyped. And my dad is just chilling back there, surfing. Felt like I was on drinking some Red Bull or something, bro. I felt like I was going crazy. End of the contest, went to the spaghetti spot. Oh God, it was so good. And I did not make it to finals. I ended up qualifying 11th, I'm pretty sure. So I didn't make the top eight cut, but then just went home, I was still super stoked on what I got. And that's pretty much the end of my journey for the Olympics in Rome. But then the next day, I went over to support the rest of the crew. The women sent it, the USA got third in the qualifiers, and then Kokona Haraki got first. That was super sick to see a fellow USA get top three. Then it's men's finals, watch it, everyone sent it. Third place, Tate Carew, fellow American, I was super stoked for him. Tate is such a sick dude. And then second, we got Luigi Cini out from Brazil. Also a really nice dude. And he absolutely sent it. He got a score of like 90 or something, right? And first place, USA represent Gavin Barker. He got first place and I was super stoked for him, USA. And funny story, we went back to the pasta spot the, the night of finals. And we saw the winner of Kokona Haraki, who won the women's, just by herself and her parents just chilling. Like, she looks sad. I don't know why. I think she, that was just normal for her because she wins everything almost. So she was just chilling there. I was like, what? You just won like $50,000. Bro, I would be hyped. I would be partying even though I can't party. Yeah, that was funny. Left the day after the finals, got home, and was just so happy to be home. That all that traveling got me tired. Just thinking how crazy it was that I went to Rome and got to live in the Roman Empire for a little bit. <laughs> so, how often do you think about the Roman I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> Dang it! I don't even know what that is, but I don't know how long 
how much I think about the Roman Empire. So Only next? thought about one. What's next? So what's next for me? Next thing is qualifiers in Dubai. This is the final qualifiers for phase one. And basically you have to be top six in the USA to get onto phase two, which is in Singapore and Bangladesh, which is kind of some odd places. But I'm in seventh right now, so I'm not in. And me and Taylor and I, who's also from USA, we're only 200 points apart. So I need to get in that top six spot so this Dubai event can really make it or break it. We're trying to get there, try to get in the top six somehow, and then I can move on to phase two and go to Bangladesh and Shanghai. So hope we get there and maybe I'll see some of you guys in Dubai. Pull up, it's gonna be early January. You'll probably see it if you just search up Olymp USA skateboarding or just World Skate SB. Shout out to USA Skateboarding and shout out to uh, everyone who helped me get here. Really appreciate it. And, and I thank you all for watching this video. And I hope you guys tune into the next one. Maybe you'll see me again in Dubai in the semifinals and watch the live this time if you want to. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. There's some more videos right over there. Subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. And we will see you in the next one. Let's go.